people's expectations have not gone down. Today we have Wendy Zapik, Senior Vice President of Sales for Alice. Alice is a hotel operation software enabling lean hotel staff to do the most impactful work in the most efficient way. We talk about why Alice was started, how it's changing the way that service staff communicate and work together, and also look towards the next 24 months of hospitality at large. Let's get into it. Wendy, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me, Danny. Really excited to um, be able to talk about uh, the future of the guest experience today. Yeah, absolutely. Well, can you just describe a little bit about what Alice does and kind of the background? Yeah, absolutely. It's a really interesting story. So our founders had just graduated from college in, in 2012 um, at the same time that we were seeing the rise of Uber and Seamless and the Domino's pizza tracking tools. And they embarked upon a, a post-graduation trip to Southeast Asia. And when they were staying at various hotels, they realized that there was a major issue in delivering service that was based on communication and uh, task management. How do you get towels to someone who might not speak your language uh, when they're in their guest <laughs> in their guest room, and they have no way of getting around that? So shortly thereafter, the Alex and Justin went into business together, um, where they started as a a guest app, and the guest app was meant to help guests talk with hotels, but after a little bit of iteration and a, a few willing guinea pigs in the hotel world, they were able to see from the data that the real opportunity was in actually helping the hotels service themselves better through transparency and accountability that an app over some manual tools like phone calls and spreadsheets and literally paper lock books would help. So essentially we became a solution in 2014. I joined the team in 2017. Um, and while the founders are no longer are with us, uh, we are doing very well, over 3,000 hotels and really have cemented ourselves in the luxury space, but work with many major brands, including Marriott and Hyatt. Wow, that's pretty amazing. 3,000 hotels and started back yeah. in 20 years. Yeah, that's a tremendous growth and um, amazing. Yeah. So so as far as the kind of the core product, can you explain a little bit about, so it's focused on internal operations for the most part. Correct. What, um, go into a little bit more detail about that. Yeah, absolutely. What, so the core solution is a task management and ticketing system that employees would use to deliver great service to guests. So think of if someone were to be in a hotel room in a traditional setting, they would call the front desk and ask for shaving cream. And the front desk would then call housekeeping and say, I need some shaving cream. And then the person that answers in housekeeping would use a walkie talkie or they would go find a housekeeper to deliver the shaving cream. And in that process, you have so many broken pieces of communication. You don't know who you're talking to, what time the request came in, how long it will take to get delivered and who will do it. And so what we do is at Alice is we basically have a application that it can be used across all browsers as well as different devices. So you can use it on your desktop. You can use it mobily. We've been super successful because of mobile. And it allows people in different departments to be able to ask each other to do different tasks and understand what the task is, who's going to get assigned to it, and how long it will take to, to get done. So it helps with not just things that guests are asking for, but also things that employees need from each other. So for example, if you're a housekeeper and you're in a room, cleaning a room, and you realize that there's a light bulb burnt out. You can take a picture of the light bulb and take that picture and send it to one of the engineers saying, fix broken light. We have intuitive 
uh, typing, so it's very easy. The our UI UX has won tremendous awards that are up there with like the biggest of design awards. And then that would allow the engineer to show up to the right guest room with the right tools to fix the light bulb. Because in in you know if you're thinking about who we're talking to, a engineer can show up and have there could be five different light bulbs in a room, which means you need different screwdrivers and you need different parts. So it helps create clarity and transparency by managing tasks of the actual employees of hotels um, across all departments. We also have some really interesting uh, communication tools so that you can have the guests SMS message or chat message with employees about things they need. So if they wanted to talk to the concierge about um, dinner reservations, but they didn't feel like going to the concierge desk, they could SMS from the side of the pool about, hey, we would like to have a reservation, or can you ensure that my towels are back in my room? And then that allows our team to be able to get that to a ticket so that the person gets the towels or the reservations they need. But our biggest sort of unlock is that we've designed Alice to be completely um, literacy agnostic. So it's color coded and icon based. It doesn't mean that there's no words, but it does mean that regardless of your language or literacy level, anyone can use it. And in hospitality, that's particularly important. We do have it hard coded in multiple languages. So you have it in English and Spanish and we Google translate on like 30 languages. But one of the things that's really tricky is that a lot of hospitality workers globally, like frontline workers that are doing the hardest, most important things of guest service, they have different levels of education. And we've been able to provide a solution that works around all of that. You can learn it if you can read icons and understand colors. Yeah. Wow. No, that's that's amazing. Um, so as far as... It's fun. <laughs> the tagline um, I see on your website is like enabling lean hotel staff to do the most impactful work in the most efficient way. And it's no secret that finding good workers and just uh, enough workers right now has been challenging. Um, how has Alice helped uh, hotels maintain smooth operations and kind of taken up some of that slack or um, yeah? How, how's that helped? I mean, that's really, Danny, the question. I, our tagline was not that before the pandemic, but we realized quickly that we could help people do more with less. Because when you're asking people to do multiple job functions, like maybe the person that's changing the light bulb is actually an assistant manager of the hotel. So maybe they need to understand what's being asked of all the tasks. So by having a system that records everything that needs to be fixed, changed, conducted on behalf of guests and connecting that with the different roles across the hotel allows you to take stock on what is actually occurring, the time that it's taking and helping you maximize that as well as fill gaps for if you have people that aren't available, like if you don't have somebody to check in guests, so your managers are playing double double duty, how can you take their time and allow them to maximize it by understanding what is being asked in a automated one central repository versus like multiple different locations? Yeah. Yeah. No, that, that makes a lot of sense. And you mentioned that you were mainly working with a lot of luxury hotels. Um, is there like a certain size that works really well is like, uh, or yeah. How, how do you I think would about say that? that we, we work with all hotels. And so we do work with all hotels, but the reason we work with, if you look at our portfolio and why it's with like the top end of like the, if we just take, for example, like Marriott and Hyatt that are familiar with some of the people that may be watching to, you know, and listening today, they, the, the higher end, the hotel, the more necessity they have to care about the service that's being delivered. So they've been the first to invest in the software overall. But that being said, what we've seen over the pandemic is that in some of the select service market, when you think of like your limited stay hotels, like the Fairfield Inns or the the Hyatt places, at those properties where they maybe previously had like five or six people employed during the day, now they have three. And so 
since we have been following the evolution of how the pandemic has affected hospitality, and we started talking a lot about lean teams, we now have like a, a solid amount of customers across not just hospitality, which is, I would say, like probably 60% or more of our customers, but it is growing on the bottom side too, because we're able to help businesses that generally were already had low staffing go even lower. Nice. Are there any trends that you're seeing right now dealing with so many hotels that, um, you know, obviously things have just gotten such, you know, the sh everything's shaken up, but is there light at the end of the tunnel or are we in more? Is this going to be the way things are for a while still? Oh, good question. So one of the things that's really interesting is what we've noticed is that people's expectations have not gone down. So people staying at hotels, they want, first of all, everybody wants to travel. I think everyone knows that. I think like travel is going to be so gigantic over the next 24 months because people have been sitting predominantly in their houses thinking about where am I going to go when this whole world opens back up? And I think that you'll really notice a deep investment in particular, um, I think with Americans who are just really going to be ready to go on the road. And we noticed during the pandemic, there was a huge amount of occupancy uptick in drive market destinations that were not saying that they weren't like attractive before the pandemic, but they held on really strong because people were just wanted to get out. So people were staying at, at places that had cabins. They were staying at places that had like motel like doors that opened. And this is like, I'm talking in 2020. So we've noticed that people really want to travel under all circumstances. And as that continues to evolve, people's expectations aren't going away anywhere. But the one thing that they're expecting that everyone should be ready for is they may not want to talk with your staff and they want all the same things. So I think that making sure that you have as much digitally organized, whether it's honestly like your thermostat, allowing people to be able to control their thermostat, have digital um, check-in so that there's keyless entry and mobile check-in available so people can use their phone. I think that that's getting very, very important to be competitive. H ensuring that you have like SMS working throughout the hotel so people know how to communicate with you outside of via phone or face to face. And I don't think that that's going anywhere. And I think then the second follow along to that is what we do with our uh, local guest cert is just a part of our, our local, we call it local tab, and that is within our guest services. And what that does is it allows you to have a curated information in regards to your destination. So regardless if you're a city center hotel or like a resort, you could do things like offer if you're a city center hotel, like a list of all the best museums in Chicago or a family day in Chicago that had like the children's museum, different activities and have these curated lists available to send, print, keep for guests, have in rooms, the GM's favorite restaurants in the, in the city, um, if you're at a an airport hotel, like where all the rental car terminals are, like ensuring that people have the information that will make them happy and successful and productive with their stay, whatever type of stay it is. Um, I think that that's going to be really, really important going into the next 24 months because expectations are higher. Yeah. And that's that integration is available on Alice, that local tab. That is integrate. Yeah, it's a yep. It's a Google overlay. It's available with Alice. You know, it really has done very, very well with hotels that are looking to give information to guests about their location. Um, it allows you to have like a curated vendor list also. So if you wanted to know, like, this is where we put the on-call babysitters, the doctor affiliated with the hotel, our florist partner. And it allows you, if it's available with that partner, to also text with them. So you have a way to have a relationship with your partners that also touches your guests 
but makes the destination come alive for your guests. And I, and I do think that all levels of hotels are going to want to be able to have their destination sort of speak for themselves. Because if we go back to just like the comment I made about, you know, these tertiary markets and, 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 um, second cities, there's, uh, there's sort of like this idea that like, you can go from Chicago to say like a little lake town two hours away. And that lake town could have a couple of restaurants and like a nice national forest and like a favorite trail. But how do you tell everybody about that for them and what makes sense with your hotel? And that's the questions we're trying to answer is helping people make sure that their destinations and properties come to life. Has anyone, uh, it sounds like it's a, potential to be another revenue stream too to set up referral and affiliate like partnerships has anyone dabbled in, into that <laughs> not yet we're, oh, yeah, it's okay. on the roadmap i mean we're yeah. because we're like five years into being really sort of commercially successful and we have new we actually have a great new ownership group um, after our founders got out the asg hospitality they purchased over the summer that is definitely on our radar, and it, you're absolutely right. Like there is definitely um, a world where, right now, what we tell hotels is they should use that for their benefit, especially as there's a reemergence into cities. Like, hey, if you're located in New York, LA, and your hotel is giving a specific restaurant twenty reservations a night, we do have an integration with Open Table, so you can see how many reservations. So just say someone text messages your front desk. Could you have somebody make reservations for me at seven o'clock at this restaurant? And then the person does that on their behalf. It's great to go to that restaurant at the end of the year and say, hey, we sent you guys like 200 dinner reservations. You think you could give us a gift certificate for our employee party? Or yeah. or just like giving, you know, like th that's like a little example, but there is like a, a long tail example of a, a partnership ecosystem for sure. I guess moving on a little bit, um, I want to cover two specific parts of the Alice. And uh, you guys were recognized on Hotel Tech Reports for being the number one housekeeping software. Yeah. Um, congratulations. Yeah. Thank you. It's a huge honor for us, honestly. We entered the game two years ago, and um, you know, one of the reasons we've been successful is because we tell people we're going to build things quickly, and we do. Mm -hmm. We build things quickly, and so I'm very proud of the fact that this is like our really our second season in housekeeping, and we're just crushing it. And I think it has a lot to do with our ease of use and the simplistic, you know, um, adaptable design we discussed. Okay. All right. Yeah. That, that is kind of the question um, as far as like the factors that like what made you guys number one. What, what, so it's just the simplicity and that that's really the um, the distinguishing um, factor. Yeah. So when we talked about like our icon based, mm -hmm. when we talked about like our I iconography uh, and the color coding, we've yep. created a housekeeping solution that, you know, housekeepers are a really it's a really interesting role the average housekeeper in the u.s is 46 so mm -hmm. what you get from that is you get veterans you get people who want to understand their schedule they're good at what they do they um they like what they do to some extent so they're they're very consistent and with that they want to they want to have a solution that's easy for them to use that helps them manage their workload, but that it's not wordy or cumbersome or difficult. And so due to our design and our user interface and user experience, we think that that's really helped fuel our, our success. Nice. And then the other part is um, just we... We work with a lot of facility managers, and they're always about you know um, looking at their performance um, or their uh, maintenance plans and pre um, preventative maintenance plans. And how has <laughs> Alice helped maybe automate? Oops, automate or just made that that whole function run a little bit smoother. Oh, yeah, and more that's peace great. And we that's this is an area where we're really excited about. We're very excited about the future of preventative maintenance because one of the things that is, it's probably one of the most difficult roles to hire in hospitality as a chief engineer. You'll notice that they stay at hotels a long time because nobody wants them to leave. 
their inherent knowledge of how the asset is managed, what to do, who to call, how long it will take. That is basically being like a master of a domain. And so general managers, hotel management companies, they do anything to not get their top chief engineers and area engineers to leave. Those people, they will glue them down, give them, they want them to stay. So what we've done is we've created a asset management log that allows you to have a photo of your equipment and then attach appropriate documents as well as work schedules and maintenance schedules against that. And what's really interesting is people can also have tickets against that too. So just say that like somebody notices that a air conditioning in in a room isn't working they'd be able to like a housekeeper or a a guest could report it. And then someone could, it allows you to have like multi-functioning layers and how you're going to be able to manage your asset in regards to your guest experience, as well as your plans, your facility management plans, your one year, three year, five year plans. Um, We love our associated ticket sort of component because you're able to build tickets off tickets. And we have a number of checklists that are super easy to use in a sense that like you, if you want to have a checklist for a piece of equipment or a guest room, you can load a checklist and then the person literally just goes in on their phone and they like check it off. And if they have a comment, they can put a comment on it. And if they need to take a picture because something doesn't look the way that it should, they can take a picture against it. Our photo capability is definitely a game changer for people because it, I think that one of the things was missing in a lot of the manual sort of um, traditional ways of doing preventative maintenance was you didn't have photos. And if you did have photos, you'd have to like take a photo and like print it out and have it housed somewhere. We're here um, in Alice, you can have photos associated with the equipment, with the guest room, with the tickets. So people are able to not just read what something is, but like have visual recognition about um, the work that they're doing. And we're actually, we're, we have a sister company with our new owners that has like a very deep asset management CapEx module. Um, and that capital X expenditure module and asset management are going to be just like extension of the platform of, of Alice shortly. Mm, nice. What, what, can you share the name? They're transcendent. Yes, they're okay. transcendent. Tra- yeah. Transcendent. Nice. Yeah. What are the common questions or fears or pushback? Like what, what are the what are the things that you want to maybe dispel that you get pushback on before somebody invests in Alice? You know, it's Danny, this is so funny because it hasn't changed over five years. Our biggest um, no is simply inertia because it's easier to not change or do nothing different than to do something different. And people like the biggest response about why I know is we've been doing it this way for 20 years, or I've been in this role 15 years and we've always done it this way. And so change management is the biggest fear uh, by far. It's not even competition. It is change management is the biggest fear. And a lot of the employees um, outside of like the management level, like the chief engineers and stuff, they, they use a computer. They know how to like get around. But a lot of the folks we're sort of talking about on the front line, this is going to be the first time that they might have used technology to do their job. Before, if you're a, a painter at a big hotel, you would not carry your mobile phone. You'd carry work orders. You'd put your work order back to your boss. You'd go get the new work order when you're done. And now if you're getting your work orders mobily and like just say they want a picture when you're done with the work or if you find something broken and you want to send it in, it's asking people to do things a little bit differently than the way that they've done that creates um, accountability and transparency. And so that change management is our is our biggest hurdle that's our biggest no is like getting around the actual change of the human activity for the people doing the work Hmm. 
So besides making the app super simple with the color coding and iconography, um, what other ways can hotels, you know, manage ma- manage that change management, or how have people successfully navigated the uh, the onboarding? Uh, anything specific? Great question. Have- so prior to the pandemic, we really had done mostly face to face live training. That's really was like our cornerstone of success. We quickly had to offer a very robust remote training. And it allowed us to build something the way we wanted to, which has been awesome. So we have, we handle this better now than we did previously. We can show hotels hey, we take, we do recordings that have our implementations team and it's over Zoom. We provide the recordings to the properties so that they can use the recordings of when we did the initial training to train future staff. We have like a very high level of like community engagement in a sense that we offer webinars on breakfast practices frequently. We have like a great FAQ center, um, available online, a lot of like self-serve, but we also have humans available. And a big connection on why we've been successful doing this is that basically anyone who touches a hotel, so obviously not our back-end developers, our designers, or our our engineers, like our, our computer engineers, our tech engineers, everyone else has some level of hospitality experience so that they can walk the walk and they understand the operations for the problems they're trying to solve. That has made us tremendously successful. And during the the pandemic, we were able to get some people that maybe previously wouldn't have been interested in working with us because they were so like on their track to hotel world. Um, And I'd say that that is, is our sort of big differentiator is on change management is we've invested in, creating like a industry leading experience of onboarding that can happen remotely that feels very high touch and human based, but has a lot of reinforcing elements that are um, available 24 seven and user friendly. Yeah, that's awesome. As we wrap up, um, any success stories or any any anecdotes that come to mind of uh, hotels that implemented Alice and just saw some big turnaround or, or any, any, I guess, anything, oh, anything yeah. come to I mind? Mean, yeah. yeah, I mean, I can, I can just tell you about the first time I went to a launch because like running sales, it's not typical for me to go on property like when they're launching a hotel But I decided I wanted to do a little research mission and I was going to go to a bunch of launches because I wanted to help improve that experience of launching. And this was before the pandemic. So we're talking like 20, late 2017, early 2018 was my research project. And I had an opportunity to be in the room over two days where we were training at a Doubletree, which is a Hilton, a Hilton type of hotel. Um, for our service to delivery, like how things get delivered as well as preventative maintenance. And the housekeepers were using it for corrective housekeeping. Not what we have now, which is our automated housekeeping, very advanced, but just corrective, like clean a room, not clean room. And I, there was a, a we had a, a bilingual trainer. So we brought in a bilingual trainer that could train in Spanish and English. But one of the things that was like, like a late a person was crying after it was like so moving was that in a hotel, if you have just say like front desk agents that are speaking English, but they don't speak Spanish when they call to talk to a housekeeper, it's super difficult. It's super difficult because they don't have a common language. And so for them to say something, it's like, can you please do this? And it's like very like, it's just a lot of anxiety. Like who feels like they're doing the right thing? One person probably feels like they're dumbing it down and another person probably feels stupid. And it's like, neither is what's occurring. So the housekeeper realized that she could put in her request in Spanish and that the front desk would get that request in English. 
And all of a sudden, when they, we went to go answer the question, and then the, the front desk person put in the answer in English, and it came in in Spanish, she freaked out. Because she was thinking of all the years that she's been there, like struggling to understand what she needed to get to the room, like coming up with like pictures and code words, like all these crazy things that hotels have had to do. If a housekeeper's in a room, have two rings happen. If you need this to happen, like call down and two rings equals this. And like all of that was alleviated because now it's just like, oh, I can, I can speak and read in Spanish and you can speak and read in English. Great. Here's my Spanish to English. Here's your English to Spanish. And so that happens a lot. And after watching that, I, I really was like, wait a second. We are doing something really different here. Before that, I was like, this is cool. And it's going to help promote transparency. And it'll make people more efficient. But after I saw that, I was like, her life just got better. She feels better about her work, about who she is. In a professional space, she's like feels much more empowered, and so that kind of has fueled my own love story with Alice, yeah, because I wow. think of the, the the people that have like struggled to get just it done before, and like how it can be really impactful for those people. Yeah, no, that, that's amazing. That's uh, yeah, that, I feel your passion. That uh, yeah, this life changing, yeah. and it's not just a yeah, it's some tech. It's uh, it's it's affecting the way people do their jobs. And that's a big part of people's lives. So and perception um, about how they approach it, right? So there's like this perception now that like, I can use all the words that I have to get my point across. Mm-hmm. Where before it's like, oh, yeah, I, can, I don't have all the words. Right. Wait, and anything I haven't asked that you want to touch on or anything um, that I guess closing thoughts? As we, as we wrap uh, no, up. I just think that, you know, um, travel is going to be back big. I think mm. hotels are smart investments. And I think that people have learned that they want to escape more than ever. And that that value and of investing in experience, it's not lost on anyone now. Because who knows when you're going to need to spend a lot of time in your house. So you may as well try to go see whatever you need to see when you can. Yep, <laughs> and that yep. I think is is going to really play out over the next several years. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Um, if someone wants to get more information about Alice, reach out on the online or where should, uh, where would you direct Yeah, them? absolutely. Aliceplatform.com um, or Wendy at Aliceplatform.com is, I joined early, so I get to not have to have my last name and my email address. Um, and so and it's just typically how you'd spell Wendy, W-E-N-D-Y. At, um, aliceplatform.com but check us out reach out we with you know we welcome referrals and we're grateful for your investment in our time today awesome all right wendy well thanks for coming on the show appreciate it thanks danny have a good day